I love you to death, but I love you to death, Bella. But we we got issues, kid. We got issues. Oh my god! You did that on purpose. Yeah, you you did that on purpose. She, I think she did. She is a Nirvana fan, and I didn't know this was her favorite. Nirvana album, it can't be. It well, can't be. Dude, there's only fucking three. It yes, ain't but hard. but still, honest to God, I mean, yeah, oh. Doug, here we go. The album that we're going to review today is In Utero by Nirvana. It is their third and final studio album. Correct. This was released on September 21st of 1993. Peaks at number one on the Billboard charts. And is certified five times platinum. Once again, kids, popular does not equal fucking good. But again, this was also at a time when people basically there's Had, there's there's reason people were buying this album, and it wasn't. It was the name. No, it was it was it, it was, was well the name, the name of the band and the singles. The name of the band. It was right. This was right after Nevermind, so there was a hot band. It was mass fucking hysteria. Mm-hmm. You're right, Doug. Third and final. Thank God. Well, I wouldn't say that. Don't, 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 don't go that far. I would. Well, come on. I would. No, I, I mean, it was their final. I mean, you can't say anything well, else. Well, I know that. Well, then, why are you say saying it can't under, say under, No, 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 no. Under the circumstances that it became their final, I'll give you that much. But if they would have never put out another fucking record under any circumstances, you know, if, if even if Kurt wouldn't have been killed by his wife, if they would have never put out another record. And by the way, he was planning on retiring from music. Watch fucking Soaked in Bleach. No, he did. He, yeah, he, he didn't. Uh, to tell you, and, and I don't know about you, I, I'll, I'll say this now. <clears throat> Go ahead. They went with a different producer. And yeah, from Butch what, didn't produce this. Right. And, and Kurt kind of wanted it to sound like trash. Success. And when they took it to Geffen and they listened to it, Geffen was like, uh, we're not putting this shit out. You need to go back. And Kurt was like, I ain't fucking doing this whole album all over again. They're like, well, remaster it. No. And Kirk ended up, you know, winning out. But I'm like, whoo. All right. Let's get into this. Obviously, our three, ca- our, our three fucking balloon heads. Uh, two balloon heads and Dave Grohl. Um, you got Kurt Cobain on vocals and guitar, Chris Novoselic on bass guitar, and Dave Grohl on drums. Mm-hmm. All right. I, I, I'm, you know what? I'm perfectly content to sit back and let you guys handle this, and I'll interject. No. I mean, well, okay. If if you want to, first song. Um, what survive the servants? Serve the servants. Serve the servants. Yeah. This one uh, I didn't think was that bad. I mean, it, then it, you're tone deaf. Everything sounded out of tune. Like no practice went into it. They showed the hell up and just played shit. Doug says if this was the 1600s, they would have been burned for witchcraft. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! You're not wrong. All right, what I've got for serve the servants. This is a no. <sighs> How do people like this? I, I just thought it had a classic Nirvana sound. I really did. The solo uh, is what? fucking repulsive. <sighs> Wait, it's well, hang, not, on, it's, hang on a minute. No, hang on. I want to... Re- classic? Well, I mean... It, the it, three it, fucking albums! Saying, How the it's, fuck it's, you have a classic? It's, it's still, what? it's what? normal sound. What? No, no, no. no. It's like, it was, the, oh, well, this was classic Nirvana. Oh, then sh- Retro Nirvana was the second up, album. Yeah, whatever. No, what no, the no, fuck? No, Bleach is Retro Nirvana. <laughs> it's three fucking albums. Classic Nirvana. It's like... They went back to their roots. It's classic now, so <laughs> shut up. No, no, it's old now. Classic implies fucking certain degree of quality. Yes, a DeLorean is classic. And like I said... A Studebaker is old. I don't know. I'd flip-flop that. Yeah, DeLoreans couldn't get out of their own way. Beautiful car. Shut up. <laughs> okay, fair enough. All right. Number two. <sighs> Scentless Apprentice. The only good thing about this song are the drums. Oh, you kiss ass, you. And maybe, <laughs> maybe there was a, a little riff here and there that actually sounded good, but the rest no, of no. it was, 
What do you mean calling me? What do you mean a kiss ass? <laughs> oh, Dave Grohl, Dave Grohl, I love the drums. <laughs> That's the only thing that actually sounded good in this. This sounded like an art experiment. Sucked. This song, once again, is a no. I, and I gave it a no. Three Bs. Basic, bland, and boring. I, the screaming in the chorus of this song is a horrid fucking clippy mess. If this, if this is the sound you're going for, you had no business making fucking records. Oh, I don't want to be famous. Then fucking stop. Get off. You had control of the Ferris wheel, dickhead. Mm. Moving on. Track number three. Heart-shaped box. I really enjoy this song. It's one of the singles, and I do actually enjoy it, because it sounds like something that would have been on Nevermind. This is a meh for me. I, I can agree. I can, understand, I can understand why it's a meh. I know you're not yeah. the biggest Nirvana fan. Well, but that being said... A meh for you is high praise. For Nirvana, yes. <laughs> yes. I understand why this was a single. This is one of the few listenable mm-hmm. songs mm-hmm. on this pile of shit. Mm-hmm. Moving on. Track number four. Well, uh, they, they had to change the name for the Walmart release. Oh, really? Yeah. It was on, on the Walmart release. It was Waif Me. So that's what it's going to be as we talk about it. So we don't get a strike. Waif Me again? Yes. Yep. This gets a meh from me. Yeah. I like nice, simple song. Uh, I know you don't like Kurt's vocals but in oh, this oh song, you just wait till i get my fucking analysis of the song buddy. I, I just I, I i i did enjoy his singing this i just love his screech sometimes and once again those drums when this thing kicks in are freaking just yeah and again i think me. as compared to the rest of the album yes this sounded like something for nevermind right which is why i didn't it's not that i enjoyed it i mean i don't really it's like you can't say you enjoy this song it's listenable <laughs> But it, and this is why Kirk wanted he, he didn't want another Nevermind. He but he just oh, oh. like I said, I still got to ask Phil why she picked this record. I give this one a meh. She's a shit disturber. That's why I told you. this could have been a passable punk rock song. And after this, I don't want to ever hear you, Miller, ever <laughs> bag on the Misfits lyrics. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to ever fucking hear that from you <clears throat> after this shit. I was listening to them again today at work, 20 Eyes. Nice. Oh, I love that song. Track number five. Francis Farmer will, will have her revenge on Seattle. Was that his daughter? Yes. Okay. Francis was his daughter, but Francis Farmer, I read, was an actress. Francis Farmer oh, okay. was an actress, but Francis Bean right. is his oh, daughter. Oh, okay. Yeah. Go ahead. This, got... the, well, this started out okay, but then ended as a complete fucking mess. What the fuck was up with that feedback pop? Like that really high note right after the first... I'll tell you exactly what's up with it. Cobain didn't know how to EQ shit. And he played them fucking um, overcomplicated Fender Jaguars that have 87 fucking switches on them. Uh-huh. Okay? And... In the meantime, had the audacity to call Leo Fender a fucking idiot. But why would you leave some... Like, you're listening to this song and all of a sudden... Because he wants to be edgy. Making your fucking ears bleed out of nowhere. Because he wants to be edgy. No. But but it was... Like I said, that song... I thought this song... This song is a meh for me. But man, when that that freaking thing happened, oh my God. This is basic as fuck. Track number six, app title, it's called Dumb. I could not, this sounded familiar. Like the riff was reused. And it I, was. It's typical fucking no, Nirvana but what? Dribble. But what riff was it? I mean, It could I, have been any of I, I, It's like, when, as I'm listening to this, I'm like, I know I've heard this song earlier. You know what? But I couldn't place it, and I wasn't about to go you listen to more Nirvana. Spirit and slow it down. I don't it know. Was, it was something. I was but like, it, it, it was good because it sounded familiar. Mm-hmm. And again, sounded earlier. No, it's basic fucking Nirvana drivel. I have nice, mellow song. 
right before shit goes south. This is yeah, fucking terrible. This fucking wasn't hard. a terrible song. It's fucking terrible. That's oh. his opinion. You have to respect I'll it. I'll respect his opinion. Next is another fucking shit song, Very Ape. Yep. All my notes are is garbled mess. I, I actually gave this one a bit of praise. <laughs> I the, the beat was okay, but the, who the fuck? Oh, the singer was just fucking horrible. Read it. Read it. Jim, if you like a screech now and again, buy a parrot. No. Or Norwegian Blue. <laughs> Norwegian Blue. Beautiful, Hello, Polly. Beautiful <laughs> plumage. <laughs> anyway, for Very Ape, I actually gave this one a meh. Mm. It's a pretty cool riff in a fucking lame song. Yeah. Track number eight. Milk It, which is exactly what Courtney did to your fucking corpse. I actually wrote my notes on this. is the very definition of trying too hard. Bad uh, From bad Led Zeppelin <laughs> to bad punk rock. This is just fucking noise. And whoever <laughs> mixed these fucking lyrics, you could hardly hear them fucking sing. That's a good thing. I think they got some guy off the street. Honest to God. You know, now, that, that worked for the owner of CBGBs when he was looking for a guy to run the boards. But <laughs> it's like, hey, you, do you know how to do dials? Come on in. Mix our tracks. Oh, good God. Ugh. I wish they would have gotten the producer of the Metallica and just for all album so he could just turn all of them down. Yeah. <laughs> Don't just turn the bass down. Turn all of it down except Grohl. <laughs> Moving on. Kiss ass. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> no, he's a kiss ass. No, I, I've, said, I've said for years and years the only fucking talented I'm guy sorry. in that band was Grohl. All right. Number nine. Penny Royalty. All right. Was this a Beatles cover? I don't know. No, I, don't I it on, it's, no, it's, no, it's not. It's it not. sounded like something a title the Beatles would write. It, but I said either way, it was shit. No, it, it it's garbage because uh, remembering <laughs> back to when I when I got the fucking track listing off of Wikipedia. Yeah. Every one of these piles of shit except for two were written exclusively by Cobain. I I I th- this one will get a meh. I I I I dug the uh, dis- distorted guitar sound in this song. I I I just I don't know. I, it wasn't a totally horrible song. Yeah, it was. But it Nirvana was Nir- a lot better than the two right. I tell you, no. Look, there's a lot of bands out there that have done distortion and then released the pedal, which kind of like highlights how their distortion was done. I've never seen a Nirvana pedal. No. He wasn't around long enough to do it. No, no. <laughs> they would have done it for money, trust me. Oh yeah. Uh, I, oh yeah. We've we've all seen the you know, even even uh Satch got the got the melter yeah. <laughs> pedal. So I give this song a no. More wah 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 <laughs> I'm so miserable horse shit. Fuck off already. My exact notes. Hmm? Moving on, track number ten. Radio friendly unit shifter. Now, you know where the front counter is at at work. Okay? Yeah. Okay. So, while Brian was leaving, mm-hmm. I was showing him how horrible some of these songs were. Okay. And I was at Rob's computer playing this song, uh-huh. and he heard the fucking feedback all the way down by the back counter. Huh. My notes on this, it's just a total song of nothing but fucking feedback. Doug, you're not wrong. It, what, what Doug, Doug said saying? Dave is the main talent in that train wreck of a band. Yeah, you're I not said, fucking kidding. My only notes in this song was, good lord, it gets worse. You, you, but seriously, that's all this was, which is nothing but fucking feedback. Well, it, my, which goes in, which feeds into my notes. Mm-hmm. We get it. You're edgy. This isn't radio friendly. How fucking ironic. Next. Bella, wait till I see you. <laughs> wait till I F- see oh, you. wait. Oh, there's one more fucking, there's one more note on radio-friendly unit shifter. Fuck out of here. Number 11, Tourette's. I think he has it. No. He doesn't have nothing no I more. Just, I just, but, mm, I, mm, oh. Oh. What do you got? Hey, let's write a punk song. That'd be cool. Well, my notes. 
a decent attempt at a punk song, but his voice is like nails on a fucking chalkboard. See, it's like it's like we share a goddamn brain sometimes. It's like we hear it. Fucking terrible. Yeah. And it ends with the other main single off the record, All Apologies. This is the only fucking song. You went one for 12, fuckers. This one got a yes. Yeah, I enjoy All Apologies. I, this is another a single off the ad that I do enjoy. I have uh, All Apologies for uh, a few of the earlier songs on this album. <laughs> And uh, but right. it is a nice mellow ender. I enjoy this. Song. It, th- this is a, actually a decent song. I don't mi- I don't mind this one. This is one of the few Nirvana songs I won't immediately fucking turn off. Yeah. What are your final uh, right. thoughts and rating? Final thoughts. If you like Nevermind, this has little to offer. <laughs> it's not an evolution, but a step down. It, it feels rushed and like no care was put into it. And I give it a four. I rated this fucker lower than Bon Jovi, and you know what I think of Bon Jovi. There you go. It was recorded in two weeks. No excuse. No excuse. No, I, Russia, no, no. Wait, wait, stop, stop, stop right I'm fucking not, there. I'm not making excuses. Russia's 2112. Russia's 2112 was recorded in two weeks. I'm just saying, when he says Rush, it, it fucking did. It was just like, what the fuck? Russia's 2112. Was recorded in two weeks. Black Sabbath's debut was recorded in twenty-four hours. Mm-hmm. This this just felt like nobody talent cared. can overcome. Well, that time. was only like five songs, though. What? Black Sabbath's first album. How, may I? May I? May I? Bitch, please. How many songs was that? <laughs> it's like there's like eight songs on it. I don't. I don't remember. And there was absolutely no digital at the time. No, I know. None. Fucking talent overcomes time. I was going to give it a five. <laughs> you, that's you, fucking. You still can. That's, that's a little too much, but okay. It's a five. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> I told you. I can't. I'm, I, 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 I. You're just worried that the Father's Day is coming up. You're not going to get nothing good because of this shit. No. All right. I'm not going to listen to this. I'm going to have fucking that block. Here's, here is my <laughs> final thoughts on this. <sighs> I've said it a million times. I will say it a million more. Kurt Cobain was a decent, nothing more, lyricist. He was not fucking revolutionary. He was not groundbreaking. He was not the fucking Jim Morrison of our generation. Not even close. He was a fucking mediocre guitarist at best. At fucking best. Mediocre. Chris Novoselic is a competent bassist. Nothing more. Nothing less. No one is ever going to fucking even... Uh, going to ever confuse him with someone even on the level of like Tina Weymouth. Let alone a real excellent bass player. Dave Grohl is the true talent in this band. He's proven that over and over again. They are lionized. This band is fucking lionized because Kurt Cobain is dead. No other reason. Had Kurt not died, their career would have fizzled out in probably another two years. I would, mm, if they kept putting out shit like this, yes. Mm-hmm. The career would have fizzled out. I would have given it another two years. I nearly got into a fist fight. Oh, yeah. Over Kurt Cobain's death. Oh. Because I said, great. Nice. Another fucking weak heroin user off my planet. Mm. Fucking terrible. I give the album a two. And that's being fucking generous.